Hey, Riley Elementary students, welcome to week seven. It is our favorite time of the whole week, lesson time. I love lesson time. This is absolutely my favorite part of teaching. I just gotta, I gotta let you know. This is like, this is my go-to, um, okay, pause. It is my go-to when I, when I can see you in the classroom. Um, just know that we miss you and we love you and um, we hope that you're all doing well and staying healthy and safe. Um, and we hope that we hope we get to see each other again. Uh, it would be really nice to be able to say hi to you all and give you a big old a big old hug. Okay. So anyway, let's move on to our lesson notes and get this rocking and rolling. I would like for you to open up a brand new spanking page in your reading notebook, language arts notebook. Mine's purple. You know, if you're in my class, so get that out and let's get started. Okay. Um, I want you to open up. You ready for this? Drum roll, unit four, lesson three, holy macaroni. Lesson, ah, why isn't that connecting? Pen, work. Okay, it's not going to. This is an L. Oh, look, there it finally went. Okay, I know it looks ridiculous, but let's just roll with it, okay? All right, here we go. We are going to be talking about point of view, okay? Now, I know we've done this before, but it is one of those skills that you are going to use in your whole educational career and probably even after that, okay? It's kind of important, and it's important that you know what it is now. So that way, when skills, when they're asking you to use point of view skills, that you're not like, wait, 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 I can't remember what point of view it. So just let's put this, ingrain this in your memory. And one of the ways of doing that is by writing notes, okay? Listening, writing, even then telling your parents about it later on. That's a great idea. Dinner conversation. Go ahead and tell your parents all about what you learned today um, as watching this video. I love it. All right. You be the teacher. <laughs> okay. So there's two different ways of um, talking about point of view. The first one that I want to go over is the character in the story. Well, no, pause. It's who's telling the story. And there's two main who's telling the story um, things. And I'm going to talk about both, okay? So point of view is, let's, it, first off, it's who is telling the story. Sometimes people ask, who's telling a story and they want to know who it is, but they don't want to know like a character name. They don't want you to say like, Oh, um, you know, Daniel's telling a story. No, 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 no. They want to know, is it first person or is it third person? Okay. So those are the main ways to tell who's telling a story first. And let's talk about first, first, <laughs> cause it comes first. Okay. So first person point of view. Is somebody inside the story telling you that story? Okay, it is a character in that story who's telling you what's going on around them and what's happening. Okay, character inside the story telling you the story. So, character in the story telling you the story. So if I told you a story about my life, that would be first person, okay? Because I'm in the story. So I am telling you what is happening in that story. Does that make sense? Okay. I would be using a lot of words like I, me, we, us, because I'm included in that story. I'm in what's ever happening, right? So you want to be you want to be mindful of those words. Those are your clue words. Your brain goes ding, 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 ding. First person, right? I, me, we, us. Okay. Those are our, those are our first person um, point of view. I guess I didn't add person in here. Try to squeeze that in right there. It's important. It's first person point of view. Okay. I promise I'll do better with the next one. Okay, now, here's the key, though. I want you to know something. 
when somebody is talking in the story, you so so a character is using dialogue. It's it's dialogue. So there's quote. I keep doing this because there's quotations marks around it. When somebody's talking in the story, you have you can't count that. You can't look for those words while they're talking. Okay, because characters can say anything that they want. They can use the word I, and they might not be the person telling the story, right? So while they're talking, don't look at look, don't look for those words. Outside of the dialogue, that's where you need to look for those words. I, me, we, us, okay? Those kinds of words. My, right? Okay. Now the next one, like I said, is going to be third person. Third person point of view is, let's wait. Let me write this. I I talk too much and don't write what I'm supposed to write. So third person point of view means that somebody outside of the story is telling you the story. Okay, so here's the situation. Here's the story. Somebody over here is telling you what's going on. They're not involved in the story. Okay, so I want you to know that third person is like a narrator telling you the story. Okay. So let's write that note. Narrator telling the story. I'm going to put slash someone outside. Okay. Now, narrator's telling you the story, you know lots of different things that are happening from different angles, from different points of view, right? It, the situation's happening, but you might know from every angle what's going on. Or you might know the actions and the feelings of, of different, many different characters. Now, in first person, when it's one person telling you the story that's inside the story, who's whose thoughts and feelings are we going to know? We're only going to know that one person, right? We're not going to know um, anybody else's actions or what they're doing. We're going to be following pretty much that one character all the way through because they're the ones telling the story, okay? Narrators, out, somebody outside of the story, they get to tell you everybody or what's going on all around, okay? Now, outside of dialogue, you're going to look for these special words, okay? You're looking for like he, his, her, she, them, they, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Anything that does not include the narrator, okay, because they're not part of the story. Now, if I, okay, back to the first person, if I told you that story about my life, that's first person, right? And if you would go home and tell that same story about what I told you, were you part of the story about my life? No, you're third person. I'm first person. When I'm talking about it, it's my life. It's my story. First person. But if you go and repeat that story, which, of course, you're allowed. And if I tell you a great story, I hope you do. But if you go at home and tell them a story, about Miss Burnett and her life, are you involved? No. So you are a third person narrator, okay? You're a third person point of view, all right? Now, let's get on. I said that there was two ways of talking about point of view, okay? One we've already discussed. It's who's telling the story, and it's first person or third person. Got it. Okay. Now, the next way is it's the opinion of whoever, the character in the story, um, the author of the story, okay? So point of view, and I'm going to put POV. What does it stand for? Point of view. Um, the op I'm going to put opinion. Opinion of character or author or um, whatever they ask for, okay? Narrator. Um, so it's that opinion and they, they're talking about the, um, ab about the situation. 
Okay. So whatever's happening, they have an opinion on it. They want their point of view. They want to know what they believe. What is their belief of what's happening? Okay. Now this will this this will change with each character. Um, something could something could happen. One situation happens, and everyone sees something a little different. Now I'm going to show you this. Um, okay. So these these people. Oh boy. I need to dust my house. Okay. Okay. You ready? These people. Are, I just love these people. This is my mamaw and papa. Okay. Uh, look how cute they are. Anyway, this is on their 50th wedding anniversary. Adorable. Papa had her favorite song, sang to her, and it was just so sweet. And she gave him a big old kiss. And guess what? I got the picture. Anyway, so here's their picture. If I, if you look at their picture this way, you see something different. If you look at it this way, you see something different. If you look at it this way, you see something different. If this was a situation, okay, you're seeing this side. I'm seeing this side. Our point of view of this situation is different, right? Okay, you might see love and joy and happiness. I see something maybe useful and um, um, something that could stand because I see like this. I see uh, like a hinge. I see... Okay, I'm seeing something different. My point of view of whatever this item was or whatever the situation was is different than yours. Okay, so when we look at or when characters are, are put in situations and stories, when we're put in situations, we have different points of view. We have different opinions, beliefs than, than others going on around. Okay. Um have okay here here's something that could be a point of view that helps me um one situation right you and your sibling were horse playing in the house okay and lamp broke okay you saw it as your sibling's fault your sibling sees it as your fault you both were in that situation but you both have difference of opinions because you see it as, oh, well, if they wouldn't have started it, then I wouldn't have broke the lamp. And they saw it as like, well, you should have been more careful. And, you know, so it, what I'm saying is same situation, one situation, different points of view. OK, now here we go. We are going to talk about this book. Three Little Pigs. I love this book. This was my version. <laughs> this is the version I grew up on, okay? Um, my grandma Marge had this at her house, and I got to read it all the time. And this is this is actually, I think, the best version of The Three Little Pigs because there's lots of different versions. Um, but anyway, moving on, okay? And I'm only going to read you a couple of pages because I think we know pretty much the story of the three little pigs. Um, so here we go. Once upon a time, there was a pig mother, a uh, mother pig who had three little pig children. One day she said to them, it is time for you to go out into the world and make your fortune. The three little pigs packed their bags and said goodbye to their mother. They left the house and each went along a different path. The first little pig soon met a man with a load of straw. Please, mister, will you give me some straw to build the house? The man did, and the little pig quickly built himself a straw house. It was not a very strong house, but the little pig was so happy that he began to dance and sing. Along came a hungry and wicked wolf who knocked at the door and called out in a gruff voice, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. The little pig grunted and answered, No, no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. I will not let you in. You will be sorry, growled the wolf. I will huff and I will buff and I will blow your house in. Whoops, whoops, whoops. I'm bad with this stuff. So the wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the house of straw right down. And then he ate up the first little pig. That's where it always gets people. They're like, Wait, no, they didn't eat him up. My version, ate the pig. Okay. So anyway, a uh, person with a straw came. Second little pig built a house. 
the the wolf came by, huff and puff. No, no, not by the hair of my chin, chin, chin. Blew the house down. Guess what? Ate the second ate the second little pig. Third little pig took his time, built a brick house, right? He was very ha happy. The wolf came by. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. And he grunted and answered, no, no, not by the hair of my chin, chin, chin. I will not let you in. You will be sorry, right? I will huff and I will puff and I will blow your house in. Well, couldn't get in. Okay, I'll pick that up here. The wolf got mad. Little pig, little pig, I will catch you anyhow. I'm going to climb up on the roof and come down that chimney and eat you up. Calm down, said little pig. Hurry up. The wolf came down in the chimney, came down the chimney and fell right into a pot of boiling water over the fire. The little pig quickly popped the cover over the pot and that was the end of the wicked wolf. And the third little pig lived happily ever after in the house of bricks. Okay, so that is the situation of the three little pigs, right? Wolf comes, blows down their house. Okay, so we know that this book, and let's write, let's write at the top. Let's write three little pigs. Three little pigs. Now, what point of view, what, what point of view was this story told in? When a question is asked like that, which point of view is the story told in? That means they want either first person or third person. Okay, so who told this story? What point of view was it? Well, it wasn't saying a whole lot of eyes and knees, okay? She said to them, Okay, packed their bags. The, the person, there's not a character involved, right? They are involved, but we know what each one did, right? There's another point that we know what each one, each pig did. This one is told in third person. Okay, third person, P.O.B. A narrator told us a story, okay? We know because it said their mother, they packed their bags, she, you know. Okay, so um, that is the classic version. Now, same situation, okay? Same three little pigs, same blow your house down, okay? But I'm going to read you this one. This is my favorite. Okay, this is the true story of the three little pigs. By a wolf. <laughs> okay, you'll get it. Here we go. Whoopsie. If you've already heard this, sit back, relax, listen to it again. It's a great story. Just giggle along as we go because it's just amazing. Okay, here we go. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. Okay, so right then and there, it's telling us that this is going to be from a different point of view. Okay, this one from a narrator's point of view. And this already has said my side of the story. My talks about first person. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. I just love the pictures. Take some time and look at those pictures. Like, look how adorable. Oh, they, they did such a good job with, like, little tails and ears coming out and making it look like a cheeseburger. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in Once Upon a Time Time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezy cold and I ran out of sugar.
So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig. And he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't just want to walk into somebody else's house. So I called, little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. And that's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed. And I sneezed a great sneeze. And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw. So I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, boy. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. You're not going to believe this, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was a second little pig, dead as a doornail. Woof's honor. Now, you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, woof, and don't bother me again. (coughs) (coughs) Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar. And he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear, sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on again. Uh Uh-oh. I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pig. Whoa. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fella, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down the pig's door, and the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all of that huff and puff and blow your house down. And they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. 
maybe you can loan me a cup of sugar. The end. Okay, so same situation, right? But different point of view. This is coming from the, the wolf's point of view, right? So <clears throat> let's do, let's do this. True story. And we're going to say, what point of view is that? So in what point of view is a story told? First person. That's what it's asking, right? This is what it's asking. First person. Now, I'm going to move this down a little bit so we can kind of see a little bit better. I have a little bit more room to write. <clears throat> now I would ask you, okay, so what's the point of view of the narrator in The Three Little Pigs? What is the point of view? Now, in this question, I'm asking you, what's the opinion? So what's the opinion of the three little pigs in this story? And I want to know the point of view of the narrator, because that's who's telling the story. So what's the, the narrator's point of view? Well, the narrator's point of view is that there's a big, bad wolf that wants to eat dinner and doesn't care what he has to do. He hops and puffs and eats up innocent little pigs, right? Okay, so I'm going to say, I'm going to put it in red, point of view, and I'm going to put POV because these are our notes. Now, if you were typing this and you were writing something for an answer, would you have to write out the whole word? Yes, Miss Burtnett is the correct answer, okay? Point of view of the narrator, oops, the is a big bad wolf wanted to eat whoops sorry guys it's messy wanted to eat innocent er, innocent little pigs <clears throat> Okay, so in this story, that's the point of view of the narrator, okay? This is what the narrator believes. Now, in this story, since this is first person, we know this because the wolf was telling the story, right? I went to go for my granny's birthday. I was framed. It uses those words, and he is the one in the story telling us the story. We only know about the pigs when we come to them in the story right when he is involved with that certain pig um all right so here we go <clears throat> this one i want to know i guess i'll use black i want to know what's the point of view of the wolf in in the true story of the three little pigs so now i want you to tell me what is the opinion or the point of view of the wolf Okay, so sometimes they word things like this, and you have to you have to be ready for that. So, the point of view of the wolf. Let's let's think about this before I write it. The point of view of the wolf was that he was innocent. He was just trying to he was just trying to get sugar for his his dear old granny bir his birthday cake. Right? He he wasn't out to get the the pigs at all. He just thought. If they're dead, I might as well eat them because they would go to waste, right? I don't, I don't want I don't want waste to happen. So let's say point of view of the wolf was he um, he was innocent, innocently trying to do what trying to get sugar for his granny let's just narrow down to a fur cake right <clears throat> okay the pigs were the rude ones right pigs were rude were rude and if it wasn't for his cold he 
wouldn't have knocked, their houses wouldn't have knocked over, right? And if it wasn't for his cold, the houses, let's say, would still be standing. There we go. Okay, so do you see how um, just the same situation, different points of view, okay, and the whole story is different. Now, we could have done this with just this story, okay? We could have said, okay, so what's the point of the view of the pigs? Well, the point of the view of the pigs is probably the same as the narrator, that they were just trying to live a happy life, and they got eaten, right? But the same story, and let's see if I can find, oh, that's a perfect picture. And the same story, and we go, okay, what's the point of view of the wolf? Same story, same situation. What happened? You can tell me the different point of view of a wolf is that he was really hungry and wanted to get something to eat. He didn't care about those little pigs, right? Um, so, again, Different points of view, same situation, different points of view, okay? Differenting of opinions. Now, I want you to realize something. If a story is written in first person, or if a story is written, it doesn't matter. If a story is written in first person, and we know this character, well, another character is in that same story, right? And all of a sudden, the question asks, well, how would the story be different if it was told from this person's point of view? So then you have to think about, how would this how would this character be feeling differently and how what what actions would they be taking? OK, um, so you want to make sure that when they ask about point of view, first thing you want to make sure is that, you know, whether they're asking if it's first person or third person or if they're asking for the opinion. OK, the other thing I want you to realize is sometimes they try to do this trickery on you and they go, OK, well, if it was told from a different point of view, how would the story change? Well, then you have to pick a different character and think about how would the story change if it wasn't being told from this one character? You see what I mean? Or even a narrator outside. How would the story change if it, it became first person? Or how would the story change if it became third person outside of the story? So there's lots of different variables and you have to be very careful about how the question is worded. OK, that's what I want you to be careful about. OK, all right. Let's take a little break and we'll be back with a um the next the next part Pause. all right i hope you had a nice little break i know i did i got a nice drink after drinking that or i'm sorry after reading that true story i was like <coughs> trying, to get, trying to get myself unchoked so i could finish a story so anyway we are going to start talking about idioms oh i love idioms okay it's like one of my favorite 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 I don't know why that doesn't here. I'm going to move it over this way. You don't move it over. You go always go down. But so I just have plenty of room to write and I want to make sure that I do and that nothing. Ah, look at that craziness. Nothing gets in our way um, to learn about idioms. I love idioms. Okay, they're so much fun. This is a form of figurative language. Draw a line and I'll just draw the same line even though it's not needed in my case. Idioms. That is an I. Okay. Uh, an idiom. Figurative language. Love figurative language. I wish we could go, I wish we could have my whole figurative language unit. That would be so much fun. But it's okay. I promise you'll get to know all of your figurative language and it'll all be fine and you'll be using it for your whole life because we do. In English language, we we talk, we use figurative language a lot. We've talked about similes and metaphors before. That's part of figurative language, okay? Um, some words like alliteration, onomatopoeia, hyperbole, and idioms is one of those, and it's so fun. We say things, we use phrases that do not make sense literally. OK, if you looked at what it actually said, literally. It, it's not real, right? Um, 
Here's one. Here's an example. It's raining cats and dogs. Have you heard that before? Does it? Okay. When we look at that, literally, it's raining cats and dogs. That means from the sky, cats and dogs would be falling. Doesn't happen, right? It doesn't happen. What does it mean, though? This is where this is where it becomes an idiom. It means that it's raining really hard. Okay, so an idiom. Let's let's get our notes ready. An idiom is a phrase or expression. Oops, I was gonna put of. <laughs> Or a phrase or expression whose literal meaning is different. From the from the cultural meaning or um, the expressed meaning or what we actually mean it um, from like our cultural meaning, okay? From the cultural meaning. Okay. So example, like I just told you, um, but here's a, here's another one. Um, we're just rolling with the punches, okay? Uh, are we really being punched and we're just like rolling back and forth our face? No, okay? Uh, rolling with the punches means it's going with the flow. Literal meaning is like being punched in the face, right? But figuratively, Okay, the cultural meaning of it, the different, what we mean is we're being flexible. So think about when people come over from different countries, okay? When they come to America and we start using these phrases like, um, it's raining cats and dogs and the best thing since sliced bread and break a leg, right? <laughs> There's a perfect one. When you go and somebody's performing and you go, hey, break a leg, you know, see you later. Do you really mean I hope you break your leg? <laughs> no, literal meaning, much different than what it actually means. It actually means good luck, right? But when people come over from different countries, they're probably like, they're taking things very literal and they want to know what you mean, right? And so when you say break a leg, they actually think you want them to break a leg. And it's not good, right? We actually are talking about good luck, okay? So I have a different example here for you, and I'm going to write it down. And if I'm writing, so are you. So here we go. Example. Miss Miller is on the fence. On the fence about getting a dog. Okay, now where's the idiom in here? Right here. Boop, boop, boop. On the fence. This is an idiom. Okay. Is Miss Miller, she's she's thinking about getting a dog. I don't know if this is true. I don't think so. Because I know she has a cat, so the dog and cat might not get along. Who knows? Mine always did for whatever reason. Anyway, here, moving on. So she is deciding whether or not she should be getting a dog or not. Being on the fence doesn't mean that she's sitting on a fence trying to think about whether or not she's getting a dog. That's not what it means. It means that she's like leaning yes and no. She's having a hard time making that decision. So literally, it would mean being sitting on a fence. Figuratively, what it actually means culturally, it means that she's having a hard time making the decision, okay? Having a hard time
making the decision. Now, we're going to keep moving on because I believe we've gone over idioms before. There's a really, really adorable video on YouTube that I typically show to my class, but I've noticed that if I show it to you on here, there's no sound with it. So I um, I would like for you to look up um, just an idiot. It's just a, like idiom video. And there's this guy on there that he's he's super cool. Actually, here, I'll, I will pull it up for you just so you know what I'm talking about. YouTube. And I'm going to put in idiom. Idioms. Where's my guy? Where's my guy? Ha ha! Here it is. He is the best. He's my very favorite, Mr. Paladrome. Okay. This one is the best idiom video. I really love it. He's he's stinking adorable. He makes me laugh. So um watch that for more more practice with idioms, okay? Now, last thing we're gonna talk about today is our genre, okay? Our genre this week. Is fantasy. Fantasy. I just want to make sure I'm spelling it all correctly. Okay. Couple things. First thing we always ask ourselves is it fiction or nonfiction? Well, fantasy is actually fiction. Okay. Fiction. Oh, my eye again. It happens to me every time. Uh, fantasy is fiction. What else? Um, fantasy is so made up. It's not even close to realistic fiction. Okay, it's kind of the opposite of realistic fiction. Remember when we talked about realistic fiction? It's real, right? Fantasy is the opposite of that. It is not real. Okay, it, it has characters. It has events. It has settings. Things that could not exist in real life. So we're going to put characters. They still have these things, but um, it's there's no way it could exist. Setting, um, events, things that cannot exist in real life. All right, know that. One more thing about fantasy is not all the time, but it typically includes illustrations. Now, I've, I've told my class about this, and you should know the difference between an illustration and a picture. They're very different words, okay? An illustration is something that is drawn, okay? This is an illustration. The picture's in here. I can get my fingers to open on the page. Illustration. Picture. Real life picture illustration drawn okay so in fantasy um it typically includes uh, i'm gonna put usually usually oh my handwriting i still haven't gotten used to this even after six weeks of doing this usually includes illustrations okay um, I always think of when I think of fantasy, I always think of Harry Potter. That's like always my go to one. Um, it is made up. There are characters, events and settings that do not happen in real life. For example, you cannot go to Hogwarts. It's not a thing. You just don't um, go to the train station or wherever they are. I'm not even quite sure, but it, you don't fly through a wall. You don't run into it and fly through it. It doesn't happen. It does not exist in real life. It is fantasy. Okay. All right, guys. Hey, um, we love you. I can't believe that we are done with week seven lesson already. Um, I love you. I miss you. Ask us questions about point of view. We are happy to help you. It is important. I want to make sure that you write these notes down. Um, I can't wait to hear from you. Uh, please reach out. Okay. We miss you. We love you. All right. I'm going to get off of here if I can remember how. Oh, watch this guy. He's really cool. <laughs> 
Okay, guys. Toodaloo. Love you. Bye.